In this video, we will demonstrate that an orthoscaling transformation is indeed represented by a symmetric matrix with respect to a Cartesian basis. And our demonstration will be surprisingly short and sweet and very educational. It will be based on the eigenvalue decomposition. So make sure that you're on top of that concept before watching this video. So what does the eigenvalue decomposition tell us? It tells us that any matrix with a full set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors can be written as a product x lambda x inverse. Okay, what's in the matrix x? Well, the columns of the matrix x consists of the components of the eigenvectors of the matrix of the linear transformation with respect to the basis. X inverse is, of course, the inverse of this matrix, and lambda is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues of the transformation, or the matrix, on the diagonal. Now, this holds for any matrix or linear transformation with a full set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We have not taken advantage of this orthogonality or of the fact that the basis is Cartesian. So we're going to do that next. Let me use this chalk to draw in our eigenvectors. We'll call this E1 and this will be E2. And of course, they are orthogonal. And not only are they orthogonal, they're also being decomposed with respect to a Cartesian basis. And that means that their components are orthogonal, sets of components are orthogonal in the sense of the algebraic dot product, alpha 1, beta 1, plus alpha 2, beta 2, plus alpha 3, beta 3, and so forth. So for that to be true, we need two things, that the basis needs to be orthogonal, and, excuse me, that the eigenvectors, the two vectors, need to be orthogonal, and that we're decomposing those vectors with respect to an orthonormal, in other words, Cartesian basis. If either one of these statements isn't true, then that relationship may not work out. But because both of these statements are true, we know that the columns of the matrix X are actually orthogonal in the sense of the algebraic dot product. Does that make the matrix X special? Well, if you recall our discussion, it doesn't quite make this matrix special. In order for this matrix to be special, its columns need to be orthonormal in the sense of the algebraic dot product. And right now we don't have orthonormality. We only have orthogonality because the eigenvectors that we chose here are merely orthogonal and not necessarily orthonormal. Well, we're free to choose orthonormal eigenvectors also, don't we? So let's now, instead of these two vectors, actually go for the orthonormal vectors. I think I said before that this is the unit circle, so let's say that's the unit circle. So we have to take these two vectors. I won't even give them names, but now we have an orthonormal eigenbasis. And because we're now decomposing a set of orthonormal vectors with respect to a Cartesian basis, we might be in two dimensions. I keep pointing to this basis thinking we're in three dimensions. All of this works in any number of dimensions, but since my drawing is in the plane, maybe I should be pointing to this basis. So now, with respect to this choice of eigenvectors, we would have a decomposition. It would have different matrices X. I will now call them Y. And let me actually write this in orange because it corresponds to this choice of vectors. So let's now call these vectors Y. And perhaps Q would have been a better choice of letter. Can you tell why? Y inverse. So now we have a matrix whose columns are orthonormal. And these matrices are very special. They're, this matrix is orthogonal. This matrix being orthogonal means that its inverse, right here, is actually its transpose. So we can write this as y lambda, and not y inverse, but y transpose. 
This is our ultimate representation of the matrix S. And it's from this representation where we took advantage of both the orthogonality of this eigenbasis and orthonormality, or in other words, the Cartesian property of the basis with respect to which we're performing the analysis. And that's where the Cartesian uh, nature of the basis enters into this analysis. We have, instead of the inverse, we have the transpose. And it's this form that actually tells us that the matrix S is symmetric. Can you see why? It actually no longer matters where these matrices came from. The only thing that matters is we have a matrix and it's transpose, bra bracketing, bracing, uh, surrounding a diagonal matrix or any symmetric matrix. This is necessarily a symmetric matrix. Here is the formal proof. Uh, I think we've discussed, we've gone over an informal proof before, but here is the formal proof. It may be a repeat of something we talked previously. I'll put it right here. What is S transpose? Well, it's the transpose of this product. And as you know, the transpose of the product, of a product, is the product of the transposes in the opposite order. So S transpose is the product of these matrices in the opposite order. Let's see what happens. What's the transpose of Y transpose? Well, that's Y. What's transpose of lambda? Well, it's a diagonal matrix. A diagonal matrix is actually symmetric. The transpose of a diagonal matrix is itself because it is symmetric. So we have lambda. And then finally, the transpose of this matrix is Y transpose. Excellent. And what do we see? We see that S transpose is exactly the same as S, right? This once again is S. So S transpose is the same as S. So S transpose equals S, as you can see. And therefore, S is a symmetric matrix. So we have just demonstrated rather easily that any orthoscaling transformation with respect to a Cartesian matrix is represented by a, by a Cartesian basis, is represented by a matrix that is indeed symmetric, thus partially justifying this name for this category of transformations. This completes the demonstration, and in the next video, we'll go in the opposite direction. We'll start with a matrix that's symmetric, and we'll prove that its eigenvectors under certain conditions, under very general conditions, are indeed orthogonal. So that's a discussion that's coming up, and as you will see, it will be more of an algebraic than a geometric discussion.